Hi, we're live. Uh, my name is Soren Smith, and it is 5:45. Uh, we welcome everybody to the show tonight. And uh, in the midst of our election coverage, well, actually, which we spent the whole much month of October um, doing, we also um, like to get some all kinds of different points of views. And tonight, I'd like to welcome Charles Delaney, Soaring Eagle, who is here tonight to talk to us a little bit about um, Abnaki. Affairs. What's what's the official? What do you call yourself officially? I mean, what's your the name uh, of your band? The name of our group is uh, Mazisquick. That's the traditional Abenaki name for the French version Missisquoi. Uh, the direct translation is is uh, the the people of the land of Flint who live in grassy meadows. The land of Flint. What, what Flint. Is Flint. I'm sorry. Okay. And um, so major concerns, issues that you would like to talk about tonight? Yeah, there, there's two um, things I'd like to talk about tonight. Uh, the first thing is is uh, something I've been working on, and it's about uh, poor leaders. And there's two in particular that uh, I'd like to talk about tonight. Um, there is one public leader today uh, who acts on the travesty of our history. Uh, first, in 1984, District Judge Mahady recognized our Aboriginal rights and said, Abenakis deserve more than the backhand from the state of Vermont. Uh, with no legislative in initiatives, by 1987, more civil disobedience uh, ensued by the Abenakis to remind state government of our Aboriginal indigenous rights uh, Superior um, Court Judge Wolchek not only agreed with the lower court, but also opened the case further to include land claims and reparations of property and person in future litigation. Uh, this sent then Governor Snelling and Attorney General Amistoy uh, running from a rational fear to write a legal brief uh, called Elliot. Under Vermont Constitution, this was argued in front of the Vermont Supreme Court under the guise of public safety as if Abenakis are a uh, public threat to Vermonters. Uh, Governor Dean and Attorney General Amistoy, not wanting public debate in the legislature, had much of the Abenaki evidence deemed hearsay. And in 1991, the state's high court made Elliott the law. Uh, by the weight of history, our sovereign Aboriginal rights have been extinguished. While Governor Dean and Attorney General Amistoy the Vermont Supreme Court um, may uh, feel that they are good jurists, uh, but we feel that they are poor historians. Uh, the governor and the attorney general have perpetrated in stealing basic rights entitled to most citizens. Under the Elliott decision, if individuals or a group identify ourselves as Abenaki, we cannot vote nor fo file claims in any of the state courts. Perhaps when any group or person steps out of line, this type of legal decision can be rendered. Uh, I think that's an open-ended question for most citizens, you know, who's next? Uh, purportedly, uh, there is a uh, governor's commission on Native Affairs to deal with Abenakis who don't exist. Two years ago, in an effort to enforce Elliott and uh, punish Abenaki leadership, Governor Dean tried to take away and control an educational grant from the federal government for minorities that Abenakis have had or have been receiving directly from the federal government for 14 years. Uh, this would disenfranchise Abenaki women and children further. Senator Jeffords uh, rewrote the education block grant bill in the U.S. Senate. Uh, he is the uh, chair of uh, that committee on the federal government. Uh, he named the Abenakis by name in the bill, guaranteeing our educational programs to continue. Today and for the past year, Governor Dean has refused to meet with us to discuss our concerns and concessions uh, and ideas for Abenaki community and non-threatening winning propositions for Vermont and state government. Uh, rather, it is up to the Abenakis to structure community. Then the leaders will follow. Mazisquick and all other Abenaki bands can do this for the betterment of all involved. Um, in the 1980s, a uh, leader arose among the Abenakis when Vermont's 
consciousness of indigenous peoples continued to be a political football. This leader restored modern cultural integrity and individual pride to many Abenakis across Vermont, but not only by himself. The Phillips in the 1960s led Abenaki affairs, and by 1973, Ronnie uh, Kahn, a Sokoka Abenaki of southeastern Vermont, educated and led the Missisquoi Nation, along with Blackie Lampman, and to such government organization that the Boston Indian Commission, a federal uh, committee, recognized Abenakis in Vermont. By the 1980s, Homer St. Francis narrowly won a disputed election from Lampman as Missisquoi's leader. Homer St. Francis became a loud voice in a social wilderness reminding all of us indigenous civil rights and pride as Abenakis. For that, he should be honored and remembered. In recent years of Abenaki elections, the Office of Chief has neglected to be on the ballot. No referendums concerning issues as casino gambling, uh, political direction such as federal recognition, were put forth for all to vote on. Homer St. Francis consolidated political power by either influence on committees or creating himself as chair. Those who disagreed um, with Homer were ignored or dismissed from committee work. Tribal council worked almost in secrecy and is a majority of Homer's immediate family, uh, basically a rubber stamp. Legal authority of the Abenaki uh, judiciary decisions were ignored. Last year, the Abenaki Constitution was circumvented when Homer St. Francis, under no mandate, ordered the expulsion of a tribal council member. With no redress, this person publicly was cited by Homer as being non-Abenaki. A warning to all Abenakis, uh, not in the same opinion uh, as himself, to uh, stay in line. When Abenaki membership rolls were submitted to the U.S. Interior Department for recognition after hasty planning, hundreds were taken off and approximately 400 were forwarded. Who knew or who voted on this? With political and financial con um, consolidation made, such decisions by anyone makes for poor leadership, and in the historical and traditional way did most of the Missisquoi government and Abenaki people leave Homer. Elders and Abenaki seeking the traditional ways reconstituted Mazisquic Abenaki for the French Missisquoi. Looking ahead, we desire to build community for the Abenaki throughout Vermont, as well as cooperation with Vermonters and state government. Organization is made by many, and the following are but a few who have worked hard for Abenakis to succeed. The River Keepers Project, formerly Dave Gilman, Reburial Fundraiser, formerly D. Brightstar. Missisquoi College, with the Adult Computer Labs, was formerly led by Mark Mitchell. Leadership is no accident. It is many, which creates freedom and unity. OK, we have a phone call. Let's go to that. Hi, do you have a question? Yeah, uh, how much blood does it take to become an Abenaki, and how do you prove it? Uh, basically. Uh, Blood are not created by uh, indigenous people. That was an idea that was brought about um, by the federal government, a, uh, uh, a government of mostly uh, led by uh, white males, uh, during the allotment or the Dawes Act in the 1870s, which mandated that they wanted to return indigenous land uh, to indigenous people, but they had to identify how Indian they were. These programs are set up and designed to breed uh, a nation out of existence in two to four um, generations. Uh, there isn't uh, any kind of mandate of how much uh, Abenaki blood one needs to have, but in order to uh, be recognized as an Abenaki within uh, uh, our membership roles, you have to uh, uh, prove those ties in terms of uh, marriage uh, certificates, birth and death records, um, family records along those lines. Uh, the Abenaki people are uh, one of two indigenous uh, peoples that I know in North America, uh, whereas if you worked with them, lived with them, uh, intermarried with them, uh, at a certain point you were considered Abenaki. 
Uh, this is traditional among our people. I think that's why uh, we got along with the, uh, well, with the French so well when uh, they settled this area. Um, it's not a device of issues among Abenakis, but one rather that is looked upon as uh, an issue created uh, by a government who in less and less wants to deal with us. I hope that answered the question. Thank you. Um, could you go into the history a little bit? Uh, where are the Abenaki peoples located? Where did they come from? A um, little bit of that? Uh, we've been here for over uh, 10,000 years. Um, state archaeologists have uh, proved that uh, uh, even before that, uh, we have uh, been here. Uh, in most recent times, because of the digs that they've done in Jericho and Huntington and up in the uh, uh, Grand Isle area, they've proved not only Abenakis have been here continuously, but they've been able to show that there were certain families who stayed in, in both places that were related. Um, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of a uh, history and a timeline, it would be take a little while to get into that. Um, because uh, most of the history hasn't been it's not, written. It's not a written history in the Vermont history books. And to try and collaborate that with uh, um, state uh, historians or the school systems who write the books, um, they basically, uh, not having such information, uh, don't want to deal with it. They view this as a uh, secular history or a history that uh, because it hasn't played a great part uh, with them, uh, doesn't deem it as a history. There are many Abenakis who have played vital roles in this society. There was a, a, uh, uh, a Captain Phillips who was made a captain in the Continental Army by uh, General George Washington who was an Abenaki scout who worked alongside Ethan Allen protecting the northern frontier here. Uh, we've had continuous individuals throughout Vermont and the uh, uh, U.S. history, uh, which uh, has shown us as Abenaki and which has shown us in a desire to work with those people around us. Okay. What, so what is it you're trying to work for specifically so that people understand um, Vermonters understand that, you know, um, the misconceptions, I guess, that, that they may see about what the Abenaki want. What, uh, what the Abenaki people want and what Mazisquick uh, is working on is community. Community is not created by uh, a state or a federal government. Community is created by um, the people themselves that desire uh, a place together because of cultural ties, because of family ties, because of a long history associated with the geography. That is what we have to create ourselves. Uh, we feel that we've been a political football for the last 30 years between governors. Some would recognize us by executive orders. Others would uh, um, refute that and resend those orders. Most recently, in the last couple of months, uh, I think it's Governor Weld, I believe, of Massachusetts, recognized the Mazisquick Abenaki here in Vermont. Uh, we also have a treaty recognition from the Mesquite uh, indigenous people of Nicaragua who visited here in a sister city uh, who came up at a uh, tribal council meeting and signed such a document. And what that is uh, by itself doesn't mandate any government to do anything. But the state of Vermont being part of the United States, it falls under Section 45 of the UN Charter, of which the United States is a member nation. And what that does is it uh, asks those governments to respect the human and civil rights of indigenous people within its borders. So it's small victories like this that we're trying to build upon uh, to create community. Uh, the eventuality would be um, uh, a land for Abenakis to uh, come back to, uh, to live upon once again. Mazisquick is uh, working towards this. Vermont being a common law system under our Constitution, uh, and in order to work with those Vermonters and state government around us, 
We don't expect to be exclusionary. This is not a separatist movement. Uh, but we do feel that we have the right to continue uh, with our culture and to bring it to the surface. What we would like to do in the future is to start purchasing land uh, and ask all Abenakis uh, to return with us to the land. That would not only um, uh, create a people of Mazisquik, but we're asking all Abenakis, Masiskoi, Kawasuk, Aristook, Sokokai, Winooskik, all of these groups, individuals, to come back to the land. Then in the future, we can decide on what kind of, of uh, way that we would lead ourselves. The traditional government, I, I would foresee, would, would continue. But uh, the uh, tribal council board at such point would probably have a reflection of all these groups and show that Abenakis are once again um, uh, united in the desire of culture in their homeland. At that point, I would hope the uh, legislature would take notice of this and that we could work out um, some sort of legal agreement uh, with the state uh, government and uh, live with each other. Sovereignty is not just about land issues. Sovereignty have to deal exactly with issues that Elliot bring out. Um, a state government or a high court, uh, given the idea that they can take away our rights, rights that are ours to begin with, we don't recognize that. We never gave away our, our sovereignty. Well, we are an occupied people. Uh, I'm Abenaki. We're also Vermonters. We're also United States citizens. The question is, is in pursuit of happiness in our culture, how are we going to create this? Uh, I can see a future where um, if we create situations that are winning propositions for both sides, why can't we um, uh, live with one another? These issues that are decisive about um, um, land claims, uh, about people being disenfranchised from personal property and businesses, uh, or the arguments that all we want is casino gamblings, uh, are smoke screens to keep us underfoot and to keep our civil rights suppressed. Um, these issues by themselves are not going to make Abenakis go away. The problem still remains. You know, how are we going to do this? How can we do this in a constructive manner? We're not doing this with the intention of trying to change history or turn the clocks back. Uh, it's a question of how can Abenaki culture survive? How can we retain our right to have our culture and our community and still live uh, with Vermonters around us? These are the questions that we need to address and to, to start working on, not these um, uh, higher issues which uh, um, take away from building community. Does each particular group or, or band have their own tribal council? Yeah, it, it works out that way, yes. Uh, the Kawasuk, for example, have a, a representation of um, the families which make up a tribal council. Uh, traditionally, the way it works is, is that you have a council of elders, and then you have a tribal council. You have a judiciary or a tribal judge, and then you have a, uh, a leader, a chairperson such as our own, uh, or a chief. By doing so, what you have is you have a system of checks and balances. The, uh, the elders and the tribal council act as a legislature. Uh, the chairperson or leader acts as um, that de divisive uh, leader as president um, or makes uh, direction or decisions on that. The checks and balances to continue is the uh, judiciary, uh, which uh, mandates decisions brought about by tribal council because of uh, maybe perhaps arguments of how it's being regulated among Abenakis. There has to be recourse for the people. Uh, there has to be a, uh, uh, an even-handed sounding board to create rules and regulations. And, and this has been a traditional um, uh, 
type of government that we've had. As I mentioned, it was in 1973 that the Boston Indian Commission helped us organize these departments, um, not for our own benefit, but so that they were recognizable to the state and federal authorities and so that we could have input on that level. Uh, we've worked hard uh, to try and continue our ways. We've had a continual line of uh, um, tribal councils and leaders since uh, European uh, settlement here. And uh, we're still continuing to be here today. So what I'm thinking is if, if all these groups have, I mean, you have uh, a lot of people who are involved in the decision making for these issues, each different groups, is it, for what you were talking about earlier, is it going to be a big challenge to get everybody to, to, to come to this idea? Because obviously everybody's going to have different ideas about where you should go. What is your feeling about that? Um, it's true that the Abenaki society in the state of Vermont is a fractured one. Uh, the different groups live around different parts of the state. Some have been more politically active, such as Mazisco and Mazisquick, in uh, recent times. Uh, but all the groups that I have uh, talked with, uh, most recently, it was a couple weeks ago, I was in Montpelier uh, at the Donland Center uh, powwow as a, uh, were, it's a benefit uh, to try and raise money for their uh, alcohol and uh, drug uh, uh, red path program. And many Abenakis from around the state attended and from all the people that I spoke to there, no matter where they were from, there is a strong desire for community and cohesiveness again. For years, I believe they looked at Missiscoy um, to do that. Um, I think in recent times that hasn't been uh, it hasn't been done. The consolidation of uh, political and financial power for a few there hasn't helped the average Abenaki. It's helped a lot of Abenakis organized in terms of uh, Abenaki Self Help Incorporated, a free health care clinic, Missiscoy College, and other programs like that that individuals have worked hard on. Uh, but in terms of consolidating uh, a culture and having people as one again, uh, this is the desire that's there. Um, once this is done, uh, it isn't going to be taken lightly uh, by Abenaki leadership. Uh, I think government is one of the hardest things to do of any people. I think any of the political leaders today or any of them that are running for office uh, would agree with this. It's one of the least uh, likely uh, jobs that anyone wants to uh, um, take on. By Mazisquick um, trying to facilitate this and by bringing other Abenakis um, from around the state back to, back to the land to create a homeland, Mazisquick itself will become a minority within the group. But the good things that will happen from this is that on tribal council in the future, perhaps there will be a representation of all these groups on one tribal council thus being identifiable among ourselves and to Vermonters and the state government um, as a cohesive people who have the desire and strength to govern themselves. And, the, and these are what we're working towards. In terms of traditional and historical Abenaki um, uh, government, uh, in all people there has been disagreements and ways to do things. And that will probably um, continue. But at least by having everyone in one place and having input that's positive, we can um, continue as a people with our best foot forward with the Vermonters. Now, talking to you before, um, you, you've mentioned you've traveled to different places and talked to people about some of these issues. Uh, the Washington, I think you mentioned once you've been to Washington to talk about things. Have you seen um, any other, I guess, um, with other in indigenous tribes around the country, um, s something similar to what you would like to see happen in Vermont? I think there's a movement uh, going across northern um, North America. I think Canada's already started in that direction. Uh, their Ministry of uh, Indigenous Affairs 
basically has made it known on the Canadian federal government level that they want to basically get out of the Indian business. Um, I think there's a, a few reasons for that. Uh, one, it's the mandate of uh, um, monies and programs. Um, it's a lot for any government to try and uh, lead or take care of other governments, especially when you have a national agenda. And I think they'd rather leave it up to these groups to decide for themselves on how they want um, to take care of their own people. Um, in the United States, uh, the federal government, um, the Interior Department, which uh, is ahead of the uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs, it has a long history and cycles to it. Every 30 or 40 years, it's like, let's uh, throw the indigenous people a bone. And then after that cycle ends, it becomes very conservative. Federal indigenous law, for probably every law that allows an indigenous person his rights here in this country, there's another two on the books which circumvent it. So depending on where the political pendulum is at the time is where you'll see uh, uh, indigenous politics across this country. I believe that's changing. I believe on the federal level, Bruce Babbitt, who's the Interior Secretary, um, sees the pitfalls in all of this, but it's still an open-ended question of how they're going to deal with this. Um, a suggestion that I believe is forthcoming in Washington would be uh, not the total disbandment of the Interior Department or the Bureau of Indian Affairs, but at least um, uh, the re-regulation of the laws that are on the books, have a commission go through this and start dealing with the indigenous rights issue and start working on all these volumes and volumes of federal law which on one hand give us and take away our rights. We have to come up with a program which is more definitive than it is, than, than being at the whims of the political spectrum every time a liberal or conservative leader deems to give or take away things from us. Under the United States Constitution, we are granted the rights of sovereignty. We, our civil rights are different from the rights of the average United States citizen. And this is what is uh, always overlooked or convenient um, to federal and the state government. An example that I can give here in Vermont is, is um, if there is federal programs for indigenous people, then it's easy for the state government or the governor to tell the federal government, oh yeah, we're Indians, so they can try and receive federal block grant monies. But when we talk about questions of community, a homeland, or civil rights of the Abenaki, which were usurped through Elliott, then we're not Indians. I don't understand how a state or a federal government can have it both ways. Uh, these are things that um, uh, I think are decisive issues in terms of control. Uh, control is a serious uh, um, issue in that uh, um, you're not going to take away people's rights to mandate what they are or who they are or where they should be. As I pointed out in Elliot earlier, if the state or federal government, in this case the state government with the blessings of the governor and the attorney general here, can mandate the existence out of history of a minority group thus taking away our civil rights, what about other groups around the state who do not have their same political thinking or do not fall in line with them? Who's next besides the Abenakis here? This is what I think the average citizen in Vermont should consider and which is very important. Under our, um, our Constitution and under um, our society, I believe Vermont has a strong, rich history of liberty and want to work with Abenakis. And I hope our leaders uh, perceive this also. Great. We are out of time. And I'd like to really thank you for coming up and expressing your thoughts. And on that note, we'll uh, sign off. Thanks. Thank you.